confusion and mixed messages swirling around COVID booster shots. Are they necessary with the Delta variant gaining ground? Good evening. I'm Juliette Goodrich. And I'm Brian Hackney, UCSF infectious disease specialist. Dr. Monica Gandhi joins us now. First, Dr. Gandhi, thanks for taking time. I know you're busy, but we wanted to start with uh, why is Pfizer trying to get emergency use authorization for COVID booster shots when the CDC's recommendation is that a booster isn't necessary right now? You know, it's been a super confusing 24 hours <laughs> based on what you just said, because what happened was that there are four large data sets, one from Canada, one from the UK, and then a very much smaller, and then one from the US, and then a much smaller one from Israel. And the Israel data set showed that after two doses, the Pfizer vaccine was not as effective in preventing symptomatic disease, 64% effective. However, these larger data sets show 85, 90%, and even 96% in the Public Health um, Foundation England data set that came out today against preventing severe disease. So actually, the Delta variant looks very well covered by two doses of the Pfizer vaccine. And there was some antibody data out in Nature and New England Journal the last couple of days. So all that put together, the CDC is saying, well, we don't see the need for a booster just because it's the Delta variant. It's really spreading among the unvaccinated. And yet somehow this, uh, this announcement got made by Pfizer yesterday. And then today they even applied for an EUA, like you said, it didn't make sense. Why would Pfizer have done that then? I mean, I don't understand. Were they looking at just one small study or do they do their own internal studies that they don't publish? You know, they're saying data is to come, but actually the good thing about these publicly available data sets in England and Canada um, are that they're out there now. In fact, the July 9th Public Health Foundation of England just posted today showed again 88% protection with two doses against symptomatic disease, 96 protect percent protection against hospitalization. So really effective vaccine, even with the Delta variant. And I meant that was specific for Delta. So unless they're looking at something that we're not understanding, I think the reason the CDC and the FDA quickly yesterday put out a statement saying, we don't see that a booster is necessary uh, is because they are looking at the same data that everyone else is and we don't see it. Immunocompromised and very elderly patients, we have to study if a booster is necessary. And I think those are going to be the populations that end up needing this, but not the general population. Okay, and I guess a booster shot would work the way booster shots usually work, that you go get another shot and theoretically it would uh, increase immunity. You know, this is the interesting thing, is it, it increases antibodies, but what's being lost in this conversation is that um, vaccines trigger T cells, which are actually your main arm of the immune system that will give you durable protection against viruses. And there's no evidence of those waning over time. And in addition, we all got excited, right, when we saw that data that showed that these vaccines trigger memory B cells. What memory B cells are, they go in your lymph nodes, they mm -hmm. hide out. When you see another virus, they come out and they, they produce more antibodies. And there's recent data that they'll produce more antibodies directed against that variant that was from Oregon Health Sciences. So all of that doesn't make sense that we would need boosters right now. Yeah, that all, that all sounded like good news. So uh, to, to switch gears a bit, the CDC today said that vaccinated teachers and students don't have to wear masks inside schools, but the state is keeping its school mask mandate. So do you think the CDC is jumping the gun or is the state being too conservative? You know, the CDC has been very consistent since May 13th that they are linking masking to vaccination status. And though there was some surprise and confusion about that on May 13th, I think most public health and infectious disease experts have come around that said, yeah, you're really protected when you're vaccinated, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a 12 year old in school. And so deviating from the CDC guidance to this degree, um, I think is it's, I don't see other states yet doing it. Only California has, has put this out and there's still a month and a half till school starts. So I think there's time to make revision. I wanna ask you one quick thing. Is it possible that the, the uh the COVID variant viruses that come out burn themselves through the most vulnerable people so that the virus itself burns out, that there's nobody left to infect because enough of us have gotten vaccinated. Yes, that is exactly the goal with this. If you look what's happening with the Delta variant, it is 
it is mainly, as you know, affecting the unvaccinated in our state, but certainly more in Missouri, Arkansas, where there are lower rates of vaccination. It is causing either asymptomatic or mild infections among the vaccinated that we may not even notice. So this is what's important is that it will eventually, we don't want it to burn itself out by mm. immunity, but it will if people don't get vaccinated. Of course, we want people to get vaccinated and to protect themselves that way. Got it. I have to credit my colleague, John Ross, who thought of that last question. And it's a good one. Yeah. And yeah. you are always an excellent source for this and for letting people know uh, what the medical opinion is of what's going on. We appreciate your time, Dr. Gandhi. Always Thank a you. pleasure. Thanks for joining us.